Thank you for joining me today, and the topic for this presentation is Narcan for first responders. The target audience for this presentation is to include law enforcement officers, EMTs and AEMTs and paramedics, firefighters, and any other person who can be considered a first responder who might be out there in public and would be issued Narcan and told if they are to encounter a person in a suspected overdose to push that Narcan. That might be coaches at schools or teachers or troop leaders or anyone who interacts with the public who might find themselves in that scary position. If you work on an ambulance or your healthcare professional, you're probably familiar with the salmon colored box of naloxone hydrochloride, which is the generic term for Narcan. And this comes usually in a two milligram in two milliliter lure jet. And we'll see exactly what it looks like and how to put it together in a little bit. If you're a lay person, a law enforcement officer, firefighter, or other first responder, you might have seen Narcan in this format, which is four milligrams, double what the other one was. And it's in a pre-assembled, ready-to-go applicator that you just put in the nostril and press. Why would Narcan be such a big deal these days? Well, everyone says there's an opioid epidemic out there. We see it on the news, and certainly first responders feel like they're going to a lot more overdoses. But is there really an epidemic of opioid abuse and overdoses out there? There are a couple places you can look. You can look, for example, at the FBI's Uniform Crime Reports. In order to get that data compiled and available to the public, it's generally about two years. The Centers for Disease Control has an excellent monitoring program, uh, and that's what we're looking at here because the data here generally is a little bit more recent. So let's take a look at what's going on with opioids. And we can start with the prevalence of drug abuse in the population over time. This chart shows the prevalence of drug use among Americans greater than 12 years old who report that they've used these drugs in the past year. And this section here are all prescription drugs and this section here are all illicit drugs. And then that big green bar in the middle is marijuana use. And these numbers at the top of each one of these bars is the percent of the population that report that they have misused those drugs in the past year. Clearly, the greatest numbers are on the prescription side. So the government is engaged in a number of programs to control the way in which opiates are prescribed. And it would appear that those new policies are having an effect on the rate of prescription. Here between the years 2006 and 2018, you can see a clear downward trend toward the second half of the period for both overall opiate prescription as well as high dose prescriptions. Doctors are definitely prescribing these drugs at lower and lower rates. Is any of this having any effect? Well, let's take a look at two categories. One is how many people wind up in the hospital because of overdoses, and then we'll take a look at fatalities. This is a snapshot to see which drugs are causing the problem. So for 100,000 of population, there's 98.1 out of 100,000 that wind up in the emergency department or hospitalized as a result of that drug use. 26.6 of that is all opioids put together. And then we have a breakdown of heroin, methadone, and other opioids as a subset of that number of 26.6. Clearly, opioids are the problem here. We know what the problem is, but is it getting better or worse? Let's take a look at the fatalities. The overall rate of drug overdose deaths from 1999 all the way up to 2017 is clearly a strong upward trend. And these lines represent all Overdose deaths, both intentional and unintentional, and this bottom blue line is unintentional overdose deaths involving opioids. And this chart is perhaps the most telling one of all. You see the purple line here is prescription opioid 
overdoses resulting in death, and that has clearly leveled off, and we know that we've made it harder on the doctors to prescribe these things. So what has come in and replaced that in a skyrocketing synthetic opioids other than methadone, and the overwhelmingly dominant drug in that category is fentanyl. All of this information is readily available on the CDC website. There are about 50 charts in this collection that I did not show you. If you go to this address, you can pick through all the data and get a really good understanding that there is, in fact, an epidemic of fatalities related to opioid drug use. And Narcan is popular because of that. What is the reason you're giving Narcan in the first place? The goal of giving Narcan is to get the person breathing if they're not breathing normally. If they are breathing normally, they don't need Narcan. The goal is not to wake the person up. So just because the person might be unconscious or heavily sedated slash stoned, uh, the official medical term is somnolent, just because they're out of it doesn't mean you need to give Narcan to wake them up. We're not trying to get them fully alert and oriented so that they can walk out to the ambulance and walk into the ER. The whole purpose behind giving Narcan is to restore respiratory drive if they're not breathing normally enough to keep them alive. There are a variety of different ways in which we give Narcan. It can be given intravenously, which is establishing an IV and pushing the drug directly into the vein of the patient. It can be given intramuscular, which is a needle that goes into a large muscle group. It can be given subcutaneously, which is a needle that goes just under the skin into the fatty tissue. Or it can be given intranasally by shooting a spray up the nostril of the patient. The dosing ranges from 0.5 to 2 milligrams, and it's repeated every 5 minutes until the desired effect is reached. I would point out that in most cases I've given Narcan myself, I've given the 0.5 dose and maybe have had to repeat it once more for a 1 milligram dose. 2 milligrams is the top end, and very often people are told, well, if there's no harmful side effect, just keep giving it. Just push the whole tube, don't worry about it. Or when in doubt, push more. So it's not uncommon when I'm responding to a suspected overdose, I'll hear dispatch get on the radio and say, second dose is in, the third dose is in, the fourth dose is in. I've arrived on scene to find up to six doses of Narcan given, and usually it's in those four milligram vials. So that's 24 milligrams of Narcan when, in my experience, I've never had to go over one milligram of Narcan to get the desired effect. That's a lot of Narcan given. Is giving too much Narcan a problem? This is the treatment guidelines for Washington County Emergency Medical Services. And the medical director here, you can see on the right, in the setting of an intentional overdose, if the patient has altered level of consciousness, with or without a gag reflex, or shows signs of respiratory depression, they're not breathing normally, airway management takes precedence over reversing the overdose with Narcan. The EMTP, or the paramedic, should consider intubating the patient rather than giving them Narcan. Why are we so cautious about slamming milligram after milligram or after milligram of Narcan into the patient? Here's the reason right here. Giving Narcan to long-term narcotic users, chronic abusers, or addicts can induce narcotic withdrawal, which creates a new set of difficult problems. So airway management and supportive care is the preferred approach. So the complications of giving Narcan potentially are sudden violent withdrawal. You're taking away the high from a person who wanted those narcotics to get high, 
And if they go into withdrawal that is severe, that withdrawal can be quite violent and even lead to seizures. There's another possible complication of Narcan, which is flash pulmonary edema. This happens in a small percentage of people, and it's a complicated medical issue that we will address in a different video. It's a really good question to ask, what is it that opioids do to the brain, and what does Narcan do to reverse that? Let's go in and take a look. Here we are zoomed into the nerve endings and the synapse, which is the space between them. We notice these opioid receptors. We have the delta, the kappa, and the mu receptors. And pain signals are traveling across the synapse up into the brain, and this patient is in pain. Being the compassionate paramedics that we are, we're going to give this patient some pain medication. In this case, we're going to give morphine. The morphine starts to flow through the patient's system and those opioid receptors are going to attract and bind with the molecules of morphine and once they do, it's going to help block the pain signals and reduce the amount of pain that travel up the system and it reduces the amount of pain that the patient is experiencing. However, we have lots more morphine in the system than we need and eventually it affects the respiratory drive and the patient stops breathing. So we have to give Narcan in order to block those opioid receptors and prevent the morphine from binding. But that Narcan is wearing off. And once the Narcan wears off, the opiates go right back to binding with the receptors and we wind up right back where we started with a patient in overdose because Narcan does not last forever. As the opioids work their way through the system, they affect all parts of the brain, but in particular, they target the limbic system, the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the hippocampus, the amygdala, and most importantly, the pons, which controls our breathing, and it's the effect that opiates have on our breathing that leads to all these fatal overdoses. Here's a demonstration. Here are the typical contents of a Narcan administration kit. You have a mucosal atomizing device, or an MAD. Here's an example of one that has a spongy cone attached to it for a good seal on the nostril. And here's an example that has a hard plastic cone attached to it. They both do exactly the same thing. They're attached to a syringe or an applicator using a lure lock or a quick twist. The Narcan you see here is typically carried on ambulances, but it's available to the public everywhere. It has two milligrams in two milliliters of fluid. And in order to put them together, you take the lure jet, which is the applicator, remove the plastic cover, remove the cap off of the Narcan, and twist the two tubes together. We still have to attach an MAD to the lure lock, so we'll take this one. And just a quarter twist is all it takes, and it's ready to go. Simply insert the cone into one of the nostrils and press, and you'll see a very fine mist comes out. Give half the dose in one nostril, half the dose in the other, and you're done. Let's go over the most important concepts one more time. There is, in fact, an epidemic of opioid narcotics overdoses, many of which are fatal. The goal of giving Narcan is not to wake the patient up. The goal is to restore their breathing. Narcotics in the system depress the respiratory drive, reversing the narcotics with a blockade agent like Narcan will restore that respiratory drive. But remember, if you're a healthcare professional, in the meantime, you are completely capable of breathing for that patient. So it is not a rush to give as much Narcan as you can. You should be giving it in doses of 0.5 to 2 milligrams 
spread out over five minutes, and I understand that on a scene in which there's an unresponsive patient, time can get compressed, and five minutes feels like five hours. But it is not beneficial to give dose after dose after dose after only waiting a minute or two. Give the Narcan a chance to work, and if you're a healthcare professional, breathe for the patient while you're waiting for it to kick in. Your safety as a first responder is the primary concern. And an angry, violent patient in drug withdrawal in the back of an ambulance going down the road at 70 miles an hour is not a good thing. So please use your best judgment in giving Narcan or in giving any drug for a patient. We want to know what we're doing and be informed and be professional. Thank you very much for watching this and stay safe out there.